All right, hello and every, everyone and welcome to the Coach's Corner. Today we have the head softball coach of Iona College, Katie Jansen. Coach, thank you for joining us and how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. You know, trying to stay warm in this blizzard that we're having right now. Of course, day one of the semester, we get multiple potentially feet of snow. So go figure, right? As luck would have it, but we're rolling with it, making it work. So we talked a little offline about um, that, obviously disappointing that um, with a, in the past month, we've had our return to campus plan here for Iona and the announcement of um, the max schedule. Um, today was supposed to be the first day of practice as the semester started. Um, just talk about what the past month has been like for you and the team with all that coming down the pipeline. Yeah, you know, it's been really exciting. Uh, first thing, knowing that we were going to have a schedule, 40 game conference only schedule uh, was super exciting uh, that, you know, there was a lot of work behind the scenes from not just us coaches in the conference, but uh, administrators in each respective school. I know our, our admin worked really hard to, you know, work with us for what we wanted. So we're just really grateful that, you know, we have an opportunity to play and, you know, 40 games is pretty good considering the circumstances. So I know not just myself, but the girls are super excited for that opportunity. And, you know, all the return to campus protocols are awesome. Uh, we're in a great position that we're going to keep our kids really safe and give them a great opportunity to practice and play. So it's been really exciting finally, you know, getting them back and hopefully tomorrow now I'll be able to see them not snowed in, but um, you know, it's been, it's been really exciting getting ready to get back. So there's a couple of things too that I'd like to touch on uh, about the schedule, but first, I guess, first and foremost, um, what are your over overall thoughts on the, the format of the schedule now just being uh, all league opponents and like you said, a 40 game slate uh, beginning in March? It's, it's going to be interesting, you know, because it's completely different than anything we've ever done before. You know, I don't think we've ever played an opponent four times, maybe except um, for, uh, you know, in, in the conference tournament or something like that, but playing on the weekends, the same team, you know, it's four games, double headers, back to back days. Uh, it's going to be tough. You know, the best thing about our league, honestly, is how competitive it is that kind of at any given moment, any team can win multiple times. The sixth seed has come out and won the tournament. So it's, it's super competitive. So that's going to create, you know, a lot of, a lot of challenges in a good way. It's, um, like, a, like you said before, 40 games is, is a great opportunity for them. And playing 40 is awesome compared to, you know, last year we played eight. So uh, the chance to get 40 in is exciting. Our league is really competitive. I think it's a fair schedule. I think it's pretty balanced. Um, so, you know, I'm excited and, and just grateful that we have this opportunity. So and now when you look at that and we talk about um, the challenges, of starting the season and getting through the entire thing um, other than the obvious, which would be COVID disruptions throughout the season. One thing that sticks out to me would be the lack of a non-conference slate, which is something that you guys would typically use. You know, you get to go down South, play in warmer weather, head out West um, and use it as like a, a preseason. So mm -hmm. is that a, something that you think will be challenging just jumping right into league play? Uh, yeah, you know, to an extent, like you said, we use a lot of those late February, early March weekends where we go down to the Carolinas or Florida, or, you know, in years past, we've been fortunate enough to go out West and play out in Southern California and, you know, to get in that warmer weather and get outside, you know, it's kind of difficult up here in, Feb you know, January, February, even early March, sometimes it's cold, there's still snow, the ground's not quite thought out yet. So using those weekends to get outside and, you know, play meaningful games as people that aren't ourselves, we do our best to do live at bats and scrimmages, you know, to the best of our ability, but to go out and play other people before conference games start is, you know, normally a huge advantage. We get to see what, we, what we've got, you know, everybody kind of gets an opportunity uh, so we really know exactly what our best lineup moving forward is. And, you know, it, it, it can be challenging in that way, but it's also, I think, exciting because the energy and excitement around conference play is always so different. You know, the girls get extra amped up for conference games. Cause like I said, in the Mac, you know, it's, it's super competitive. Uh, truly any team, you know, can go out and win it. So 
the energy, the you know intensity and all that is a little different. So I think to start the year off with a conference opponent, you know, going to St. Peter's is going to be exciting and the girls are going to be amped up probably even more than normal for our opening game, especially it being, you know, over a calendar year since we've played a game or, you know, we were scheduled to go down to Georgia the day, you know, the world stopped. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, I think it's going to be really exciting and they're, they're really hungry to get out there. Like you touched on um, the max season is always going to be not that every game doesn't matter, but conference games are in the end, what matter most. That's what's going to get you your trip to potentially a, a, the national postseason. So without the non-conference where maybe as a coach, you can get to see, you know, throw out different lineups, put people in um, positions where maybe you want to test them out. Is that something now that you are going to adjust to? And as an athlete yourself, you know that um, sometimes people get into slumps. You've got four games in a weekend. Uh, how difficult is that going to make your job and your staff's job to try and, you know, work around that? Yeah. I mean, the good news is, is that we have a really deep roster and, you know, the kids wouldn't be here if we didn't think that they had an opportunity to get right out there and make an impact. So um, us coaches, we're going to have to get creative with practice, trying to make as many game like situations as we can, whether it be indoors, even if we are in groups, you know, for safety purposes, just to get some competitive atmosphere out there for them to, you know, kind of see who's going to have that competitive edge and, you know, our depth, I think, is going to be really key, too, because like you said, you know, in a in a four game weekend, especially, you know, double header Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, kind of on repeat, you know, it's a lot of games. So, um, you know, deep roster us coaches getting, you know, pretty creative with practice structure and, and creating some kind of competitive environment to really see, you know, what we're working with and, and get our best lineup. And of course, too, you look at the roster now, like you said, it is very deep. Um, 22 players, nine of them are newcomers this mm -hmm. season. Um, what are you hoping to get from that class? And is there anyone right now, uh, that you would see having an immediate impact on the team? Yeah. I mean, you know, the nine of them are here. They would, like I said before, they wouldn't be here if we didn't think they had a chance to compete. And that's true, you know, top to bottom whole roster. So, um, their, their main job is going to be to come in and, and push the upperclassmen and bring their hungry energy, trying to prove that they deserve a starting spot is going to help push the upperclassmen to work even that much harder, knowing that there's some people breathing down their neck, so to speak. So, um, you know, and, and to just continue to learn and get better and really learn from our upperclassmen, you know, we have a lot of returners as well. So, uh, you know, nine freshmen, you know, you see it on paper and some people have been like nine freshmen, you know, what are you doing? But we were going to graduate eight last year. So we kind of needed that many and, you know, they, they wouldn't be here if they didn't have, you know, a, a good opportunity to, to start and compete. And you mentioned it too, a lot of newcomers, a lot of returners. So uh, 13 returning, like you said, eight were supposed to graduate last year. Half of that graduating class is back this year after mm -hmm. having their, what would it be their se senior season cut short? Um, just talk about how important their return is for the season, obviously on the field, but also from a leadership standpoint. Yeah, you know, the four, you know, we super seniors, you know, term that we use, uh, we're so lucky that we got, we're able to have them back. I would have loved to have all eight of them come back, but, you know, they had great job opportunities and things like that. So, you know, unfortunately it wasn't necessarily feasible for all of them, but, you know, for the four, Lonnie, Jasmine, Sierra and Blasco that we got back, you know, they've, they've played they have great experience. They've been through kind of everything, right? They've been through uh, the, the major hiccup of last year and were able to come back. They have played in MAC tournaments, championship experience, national postseason tournament experience when they were freshmen, uh, Lonnie sophomore, but when they were, the rest of them were freshmen. So having all that experience, I think is extremely valuable, especially for them to help guide and lead our nine freshmen. They were a class of seven when they were freshmen, you know, so they know what it's like to, to be the majority, be younger and kind of new and deal with those typical freshmen, little hiccups and stuff like that. And, you know, the opportunity for them to come back and get the senior season and send off that they deserve. I'm, I'm just so happy that we're able to have them back. They're wonderful people, great teammates, and they make everybody better. 
And now another thing that we, you touched on earlier and we spoke about offline is that you guys are going an entire calendar year without having played in a real life game. The, the last game that you guys have played in was March 8th, 2020 at Towson, a win. And like you said, you were headed down to Georgia right before the world stopped. Um, just talk about what that, like, what the adjustment is there to just jump right into now uh, a month plus of practice and then right into the game action. You know, I think it's, you know, kind of like what I had said before that they're going to be hungrier than ever. You know, they all remember what it was like last year when, you know, we were shut down so rapidly and how terrible it was and, you know, how much was taken away from them. And they know that any chance that we get out or are able to get out there to play and compete, you know, I think that they're, they're just so, so, so excited. They're up for the challenge and, you know, a whole calendar year is a long time, right? So not having played anybody but ourselves, you know, we didn't play any games this fall. Uh, we were able to get a couple scrimmages in as we, you know, progressed our, our return protocols and all that. And hopefully we'll be able to get the same um, this spring once it's, you know, they're acclimated and safe to do so. Um, but, you know, I think just getting back to that competitive environment they're going to be really, really, really excited for it, especially it being such a long layoff. And another thing to be excited about uh, would be playing at home, something that you guys have not done now since 2019, which is crazy to think Too about. Too long. Yeah, very long. And um, historically, the team has played uh, very well at home, and especially during your tenure. Um, without the possibility, you know, the possibility is still there that uh, fans may not be at games. Um, but what is it like to, you know, play on, be able to play at home uh, on Donald Lee Walsh Field? The girls love being at home. You know, one, obviously they get to, you know, sleep in a little bit longer in their own bed and we have our whole home game routine that they love to do. So, um, you know, the atmosphere of our field too, in my opinion, is, is the best in the conference. Sure, I might be biased, but, you know, with Rice Hall, the dorm, you know, right behind, and fans kind of everywhere up on the hill, out in the outfield, up on the hill, you know, out there in right field. So uh, that kind of energy, a lot of students come to our games as well. So, um, you know, the energy that surrounds our field is, is, is awesome. We have a really unique environment there. The girls love it. Um, so getting another home game, you know, with their own music, walk up songs and all that, that, you know, fires them up that, you know, what coaches try to tune out, right. But it, it fires the girls up and they love it. So um, seeing familiar faces, whether it be their parents or friends, classmates, uh, administrators from the college that come out to games, you know, it's, um, it's a great environment that they love. And, uh, you know, I can't wait, can't wait to finally get another home game in. Well, I hope that I speak for everyone, but certainly speaking for myself, I'm very excited for uh, the season to get underway. Of course, wish you uh, the best of luck in the return to practice and we can't wait to see you guys back in action thanks so much you know we can't wait to compete so we're going for it